Now we take a look at editing in Lightroom quite a lot, but there's one panel we've never really touched on in any great detail. And it's actually a pretty underrated panel, I think. It's not used by as many people as maybe it could be because it is incredibly powerful. We're gonna take a look at the calibration panel within Lightroom Classic, how it can affect your colors in a really meaningful way, how you can use it for saturation as well, boost those colors, change them up, it's an alternative to using the hue saturation luminance sliders as well. There's a lot you can do with it. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, like I say, let's dive into Lightroom Classic. We're going to take a look at a couple of photos. I think this is actually quite a good one to start with because we've got a lot of color going on here, right? That's not always the case in every photo. So I've done a very basic edit to this photo so far, just some global stuff to affect the exposure and stuff like that, but nothing major. And if we scroll down on the right, all the way to the bottom, we come to this calibration panel here, which you can see you've got about seven sliders, right? So one for the shadows, it says the tint here. And then we've got this red primary hue and saturation, the same for green primary and the same for blue primary. And what we're gonna be doing with the calibration panel is working more fundamentally with the actual RGB values of the pixels. That might sound a bit, a bit confusing, a bit intense, but essentially on every monitor and actually on the camera sensor as well, every color, is made up of red, green, and blue, right? That's where RGB comes from. And actually, if we look on Lightroom Classic, it tells us exactly how much red, green, and blue is making up each of these colors. So if I was to hover over, for example, uh, our model here, her top, if I was to zoom in or here, you can see in the top right of Lightroom, we've got these percentage values, right? R, 46.2. G, 62.8, and B, 46.9. That is the percentage of, say, green, for example, is 62.8% green. Now, I know what you're thinking, and this is why I think it can be a little bit confusing, especially if you're just looking at this for the first time. That doesn't add up to 100, right? But actually, it's not telling you kind of a breakdown of how much of this color is made up of each individual things, making up to 100%. It's actually telling you on a scale, essentially from zero to 100%, how much red, for example, right? 46.2, how much red from zero to 100 is in this color? If all three values were at 100, it would be white. If all three values were at zero, it would be black. So hopefully that makes some sense. And you can see if we hover over, if we hover over our skin here, for example, we can see 82.3 on red, 74 on green, 59.6 on blue. And every single color is made up of those red, green, and blue values. And we can use the calibration panel to alter those directly. And I'm gonna show you just how powerful that is. So for example, this photo here, we've got a lot of green, so we could use the green primary to really affect the look of the image. We can actually just change the hue of the green values of every single color. So this will affect the photo much more than the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders will. I'll show you exactly what this does. So green primary, we can change the hue of all the green values in the photo. And if I move that to the left, you'll see it starts to go more towards a yellow. But you can see it's not just affecting the green in the background, it's not just affecting her top, it's affecting the skin tones as well, because we're affecting the green in every color. So the more green there is in a pixel, right, in a part of the image, the more it'll be affected. If we go the other way, we're gonna move this towards more of a, a straight sort of green uh, look, a deeper green as opposed to more of the yellow. But you can see again, it affects the skin tones. So if I move that left to right a little bit faster, you see it's really affecting the skin tones. Double click to reset it. Same with red, right? Red primary is still gonna affect that background. So if I move it towards a sort of more pink feel, massively affecting the skin tones, less so in the background. If I move it over to the right, sort of a more yellowy feel again, Again, hugely affecting skin tones, but we are affecting the, the background and stuff as well. So it does affect everything, and blue will massively affect everything, I would imagine. To the left, we go to more of a sort of teal, aqua feel, massively affecting all parts of the image. And to the right, more of a kind of, more of a kind of a, a solid royal blue. Right, and again, hugely affecting that image. Now, I would never move them out that far. I think that's crazy. But you could absolutely do something like bring the green primary over a little bit towards the yellow, maybe the maybe the red 
alters a little bit to try and complement that, try and just keep the skin tones in check so that they're not going too crazy from the green primary. Maybe the blue primary moves a little bit as well. That's affecting the skin tones. That's a fairly subtle difference, actually. So we could probably push that a little bit further if we wanted to. If we wanted to warm this up, but in a very natural way. So we've almost affected the white balance here. If I was to turn this off and back on, look at that. We've really affected the white balance of the image in a lot of ways here. We've warmed things up. We've taken that kind of very green look out of it. But we've maintained the skin tones by just moving around some of those other primary values as well. And it actually works, I think, really naturally to complement your photo, right? I think I use this in conjunction with the HSL sliders, which can allow you some nice flexibility with which colors that you're targeting. But the calibration tool is so powerful for getting certain looks to your photo. I use it a lot to bring out a slight orange and teal look two images. Something like this image, which was taken around sunset, has a very golden feel to it, right? So let's look at the calibration tool for how we could affect the colors in this again. Right, so red primary, I might want to maybe bring that over towards the sort of more pink feel if I want to give it a little bit more of a naturalistic look to the overall image, or maybe over towards the kind of slightly warmer orange kind of feel to the red to really boost that warm glow. Maybe I even wanna bring the saturation up a little bit, but to keep things kind of moving in the way I want them to go, maybe I could bring the green over towards the, the kind of yellow side of things and maybe even, maybe even bring that saturation down a little bit. That way we can sort of move things towards the same direction and actually unify some of these colors. Maybe the blue primary we could bring down here to really pull this all together into a very warm, slightly more orange feel to things, right? So we're moving the, the hue of the blue primary over towards that teal aqua feel. The further we move this over, if you can see if I go all the way, we do go into a very, very burnt orange kind of feel, which is, it's way too much. But if we go down a little bit, we're just counteracting some of that yellow feel that we've been getting. And actually, look at this. If I now turn this off and back on, Look how much we have affected those colors, what feels like the white balance of the image overall as well. We've done a huge amount. So this is before and this is after, just of the calibration sliders. And we really are just using those three sliders. We're not really playing around with the shadows, the tint and the shadows. I don't tend to touch those too much. Now, again, it's very easy to slightly go too far with these, right? But it can make such a massive difference to the way your images look with regards to their color, the kind of white balance feel, but it keeps things pretty natural. Because it's affecting the entire photo, because it's affecting every single color in the image, it really does bring things together in a really nice way. If you wanna keep things a little bit more natural, have some great control of your colors and really actually enable yourself to do a little bit of an interesting color grade to your images, Calibration tool is a great one to start playing around with. A bit of trial and error goes a long way. You can always undo it, right? It's really easy in Lightroom to undo it. I think this is the kind of one that is worth playing with a little bit. Move those sliders around and see what you think, see what they're doing and actually get a feel for what you like as well. It can be great for portraits, great for landscape, great for all kinds of stuff. I use it for internal shots a lot as well to get a certain look to my images and actually play around with, like I say, that color and maybe fix a bit of white balance issues as well. Let me know in the comments though, do you already use this tool? Is this something you already play around with when you're editing your photos or is this all completely new to you? I'd love to know because it's always super interesting who uses what and how popular something actually is. So let me know in the comments. Of course, you can check out a full list of the kit we use for all these videos down in the description of the video. So there's everything down there listed that we use to film all these and all the photos and all that kind of fun stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So there's new stuff all the time. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.